Chapter 4, Lesson 2, an extension. It's called the slope of parallel and perpendicular lines. So we're going to go and build on our previous lesson of slope and talk specifically about two unique types of lines, parallel and perpendicular. Again, we can see here we're talking about a vocab and slope in 8EE5, but also down here in 8EE6, when we talk about slope, when we talk about writing an equation later on, the knowledge of parallel and perpendicular lines are going to help us, whether we write it in this form down here, where it says y equals mx, or if we're using this y equals mx plus b. Neither of those, you need to know what they mean right now, but today's lesson is building towards those skills. To start with, we've got these parallel lines. When we talk about parallel lines, they have the same slope. That's the big thing. So if I told you one line had a slope of 2, a line parallel to it's going to also have the same slope. It's going to have 2. So they both have 2. If I told you the line had a slope of negative 4, what would the parallel line be of that line? It would also be negative 4. And then here by definition, in a sense, Vertical lines will always be parallel because they're going straight up and down, even though they have the same slope undefined. You may want to put a star by that or even just a star completely around it like I can. That'll come into play because vertical lines are always parallel. Now, two non-vertical lines, so these cannot be vertical. These guys are called perpendicular when their product is negative 1. Better way to say it is this right here. They're negative reciprocals, or rather, I prefer the word opposite reciprocals. If you take the two slopes and multiply them, you're going to get this answer of negative 1. But what opposite reciprocal means is just this. If I told you one line had the slope 1 third, the perpendicular line the one that meets at a 90 degree angle that goes through it perfectly at a 90 degree angle, like an X or a T, if you will, depending on how it's positioned. Opposite reciprocal. A negative reciprocal means we're going to take and make, instead of having a positive one-third, we're going to have a negative. But now reciprocal is a big word for flip. You used that last year in your slide switch flip. So we're just going to flip it. So instead of... 3 being on the bottom, it's now going to be here on the top. And then we'll put the 1 on the bottom, which you could simplify down to negative 3. That's all opposite reciprocal means. Again, down here you may want to put a star by this, or if you want to put something all around it, put a big old box by it. This is important, comes back into play, that vertical lines will always be perpendicular to horizontal lines. We can't prove that with slope because vertical lines have undefined slope, but a vertical line and a horizontal line will always be perpendicular. They'll always meet at a 90 degree angle. They'll always form a T, if you will. Now, let's take a look at that in context of lines. Whether they give it to you in word form or in graph, we can do this. When we look at it, right here tells us the first one up top. Talking about line C as a slope of 3 fourths, or if you want to rewrite that, you could do it as a fraction, 3 over 4. Up first, we have a line that is parallel to it. Well, if line A is 3 fourths slope, if that's what line A is, that's what its M is, the slope, then line C is parallel. It's going to have the same slope. Parallel means same. That's it. There's no work, no formula, nothing. Done. Talking still about line C, now we have a line that's perpendicular to it. So we need to take this 3 fourths, and we want the opposite reciprocal. We want the negative flip. So make it the opposite. Since 3 fourths is positive, this one's going to be negative, and now flip it. Since 4 was on the bottom, it'll be on the top. And because we are talking about slope, you can leave it as an improper fraction. This here is your final answer, negative four-thirds. No formula, no work, just that for right now. When it gives it to you like that, you're set to go. 
Line D has a slope of negative 6, starting off right away. We've got line O is parallel. Well, if D has a slope of negative 6, the parallel line, D, is going to have a slope of negative 6 as well. Done. Read very carefully. They both start with the letter P down here. Line G is perpendicular. So that means we had the slope of negative 6, but now we want the opposite reciprocal, the negative flip, if you will. Since one, excuse me, since the first slope is negative, we're going to have a positive slope. I'm going to put a plus sign just so I myself know that I've taken care of that phrase opposite. But now we need the reciprocal. I need a flip six if you need to. Please put a fraction line and negative six as a fraction is negative six over one. Now flip it. Make the reciprocal. Again, opposite reciprocal. One sixth, or if you want to put that positive sign in there, that's it. When they give it to you in the graph, again, read carefully. Up here it says, which one are we looking for? We want to know parallel. All right. Which ones are parallel? On your assignment, I give you free reign. Which ones do you think? A and B, A and C, B and C. Pick them if you're right. Awesome. If you're wrong, well, then go with the next line. So for me, I'm going to do top, bottom, and then middle. So I'm going to do line A, and I'm going to find that one first. So line A, I'm going to find its slope, which is M, which is rise over run. Yep, I'm going to write that each time. So on line A, here we go. I start right here at this point. I'm going to go up one, two, count carefully, recount as well. Please remember, don't make marks in your textbook. Use the eraser or your finger to count. And then we're going to go over here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, which simplifies down to one third. Awesome. Then, like I said, just for fun, I'm going to pick line C. I'm going to go line C. I'm, you, don't, you can write it on in. You don't need to switch colors. I'm doing that so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Slope equals M equals rise over run. So here I go accounting again. So from C, I'm going to start here. And I'm going to count up. One, two. All right. So I went up two. And now I'm going to run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count carefully, recount if you need to. And then again, that can simplify down to one fourth. Awesome. So then when we take a look at it, right here, whoop, whoop, and right here, whoop, whoop. Are line A and C parallel to each other? Do they have the same slope? Did it come out to be the same number or fraction? Nope. Bummer. All right. Well, then, I guess we're going to have to do line B, and then that's going to be parallel to one of them. Always be careful, because it may look parallel to one of them. It could be a little optical illusion, so we're going to double-check it. So, M equals slope. Again, I don't care which way you write it, M first, or the word slope first. But write them both in, because we need to re remember that we have M as slope. Then you're going to write in rise over run. And here we go. From B, one, two, huh, up two again. Now I wonder, will it be eight or six? Let's count on over. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Simplifies down to one third. Which lines are parallel? Line A and line B. Knew that right away, Mr. Walls. Awesome. Great. So now you can write that out in full term. Or you can also use a shorthand. So you could say up here on top, line A and line B are parallel. Or you can use a shorthand. I forgot to mention that in the last one. For parallel, you can use just these little two diagonal slashes. So you could answer this question by saying A is parallel to B. Boom. Done. That'll work. Show me the work here if you have to count them on out. Read carefully. Are we looking for parallel or perpendicular? In this case, it says which lines are perpendicular. Again, you're free on your assignment to take a pick. Which one do you think meets at a perfectly right angle? Which one do you think makes a great 
X, where they have opposite reciprocals. When it says, how do you know? Well, we're not just going to say, it looks like it, Mr. Walt. We're going to prove it by looking at them. Now, since we need to make an X, we can start right away with line F, because we know line F is going to be one of our two lines that makes the X, because it's going diagonal. And then we need an opposite diagonal, so one of those other two. Starting with a line F, again, I'm going to write it as line F. I'm going to use different colors. You don't need to use different colors, but I would recommend labeling which line it is. It can be very helpful. M equals slope equals rise over run. Yep, you knew it. You dreaded it, whatever it might be. And now here we go. Mr. Slope Man goes from left to right, so I'm going to start at this point, but don't count this one. We go up one, two, three, four. Count carefully. Recount if you need to. And then we are going to run one, two, three, four, five, six which simplifies down to two-thirds. Please make a note. We want perpendicular lines. So we want the opposite reciprocal of two-thirds. You want the opposite flip. So since we have a positive two-thirds, we're looking for a negative three over two. And you can pick whichever one you like. I'm going to pick again just for fun. I want to pick the letter E because that one... That one looks a little bit like it, or so I think. Anywho, so here we go, line E. And again, if you think to yourself, oh, it's definitely line E, Mr. Waltz, great. Then M equals slope equals rise over run. And if I'm wrong, if you're wrong, well, then we'll just have to do the other one. If you get it right the first time, you save yourself a little step of work. So now remember, since we're starting up here at this point, and we're going down one, two, three, four. Since we went down, please make it a negative four. And then we went over one. 2, which simplifies down to negative 2 over 1, or just plain negative 2, which is not the opposite reciprocal. So then, if you were thinking to yourself, well, duh, Mr. Walls, it's line D, great. If you thought it was line D right away, you would have gotten, well, presumably here, when we do rise over run, would have got the right answer, and you would have not had to do line E. But if you have to do an extra one, that's all right. No problem. So line D again going down one, two, three, four, five, six. Count carefully. Recount if you need to, but don't put pen marks in your textbook. And then from there go over one, two, three, four. Oh. Does this slope look a little familiar to up here? except one's positive and one's negative. That's good. So when we go down here, simplifying it down to negative 3 over 2, improper, yes, but I'm going to leave it like that because then it helps us see that negative 3 over 2 is the opposite reciprocal of 2 thirds. Watch your letters. Don't get them confused. We're going to want D and F. If you mix them around, it's going to be a tear in my eye and a red pen coming on up. So tell me that. You can tell me that. By writing it out, you could say that line, let me get them right, line D is perpendicular to line, again, let me make sure I get it right, line F. You can write it out like that. We can even write it out in a full sentence, make our language teachers very proud and happy. Otherwise, Again, there's a shorthand. There's a symbol for perpendicular. I want to show that to you. Perpendicular has a shorthand that looks like this, like an upside-down T. So you could say, which lines are perpendicular? You can say line D is perpendicular to line F, and I'll accept that. And that's what we're looking at today. We did that, again, because we're looking at this word slope, which we've done before. And then as we go down, like we mentioned, mastering slope so that in the future we'll be able to look at y equals mx or y equals mx plus b and be able to write equations. But you can see right up here, we've been using, again, right triangles as we talk about that slope, down and over, up and right. Those are all right triangles that we have slope and found those. But today... You're just going to identify parallel and perpendicular lines and then show me the work with the slope or just telling me if the slope of the first line is 5 
the parallel line is 5 as well. If it's perpendicular, we're going to have that opposite reciprocal. So if one line has a slope of 2 sevenths, the perpendicular line will be opposite reciprocal.